What is up you guys, this is Jared and you are watching Backroad Exploration. Today is part two of our trip from Goblin Valley to Cathedral Valley. Uh, so if you haven't watched part one yet, make sure to go back and watch it. It's absolutely incredible. Today we're parked just about five to ten miles outside of Cathedral Valley, which is part of Capitol Reef National Park. We're parked and camping in some BLM land. And we're going to wake up this morning, get some breakfast going, and then head towards Cathedral Valley to check out Temple of the Moon, Temple of the Sun. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know I've done this trip before. Um, but it's absolutely incredible. I'm hoping to show some new things in the footage that I haven't had a chance to show before. And definitely there's some awesome new rigs with some of my friends. You can see everyone is camped right back here. Really looking forward to spend the day out on the trail. But before that, I need to eat some breakfast and see one or two people off who have to head home today. Let's go. Just look at how beautiful that is. You can see, like, that looks like it's rock, but it's actually just dirt. You can see there's multiple layers of it. And with different colors, it goes from, like, white to red to darker red and absolutely stunning. This is a perfect spot for big groups. One of the things that's hard with any trip is you want to make sure, you know, if it's just Mike and I, it's real easy to find a camp spot. One thing I wanted to be really aware of in this trip was making sure I picked a spot that was going to be big enough for anywhere between five to ten rigs because I wasn't exactly sure how many people were going to be coming. And this spot is so good that we actually had a guy right over here in the Sprinter joined us last night. They're out here checking out the area too and there's plenty of space for them as well. So really cool. Rise and shine, boys. <laughs> You just made it go cold. Yeah. So I want to show you a little trick that I stole from Mike and that he learned from my grandma. So this is a little water bottle. You can buy these on like Amazon or at CVS or Walmart for, you know, under like eight or nine bucks. And last night around 1030, we whipped out the jet boil, um, got the water to just really close to boiling, but not quite yet. And throw it in one of these. It's still warm. It's seven o'clock. Um, just throw that down in the bottom of your sleeping bag and man it really helps for keeping your feet warm and the nice thing is you dump it out you can roll it up it takes up zero space almost in the rig and I was really impressed and it wasn't a super cold night last night um, it was probably like mid 20s to low 30s but definitely helped keep my feet warm so a little way to keep warm when you're camping in the cold when it's right now like it's early March Got some sausages on the grill and basically I carry almost everything in just three bins. In this bin, I'll put the stove in sideways and put in uh, all of the boys' sleeping stuff, so their sleeping pad and sleeping bags, um, as well as pillows. In this one, I keep a lot of like my dry goods. Um, it's actually just a DeWalt uh, toolbox, but they're nice because they're waterproof. It's a good size. It actually has this little top tray, so I can put things like spices, utensils, um, condiments, things like that on top. And then down inside, I'll usually have my pan for cooking as well as, you know, like our plates and things like that. And then a cooler. And sometimes if I don't need really this big of a cooler or I'm in between in sizes and coolers, I'll put some of all the stuff that needs to stay really cold in one section and then dry goods over in another section. It's a really good way to just organize everything so it's a quick, easy grab. And water. That's really basically everything that I have. Then inside of here... We'll use the, it's kind of hard to see, but we'll use the Jeep attic up there yeah, to there. put, um, we have a little packing cube for each boy so they can shove their clothes up there. We'll put jackets, stuff that you just need to grab easy and that you also don't want getting dirty. And then you saw earlier I strapped some stuff up there. So I'm going to do a full packing video just kind of showing you everything. But really the main key is take less than you think you're going to need. And you usually still end up taking more than you actually do need. So, let's eat, guys. All right. Well, I'm not sure about this table yet. They said that it takes a little while for the canvas to stretch out. Hopefully, after using it once, the canvas will stretch out and it'll hold, because I don't think it'll hold like almost any weight right now. But I do like the idea of having a place for us all to be able to sit down and eat. I'm sitting on the downside, giving the boys the upside, so that's why it's a little higher. I think for normal height, it would work really well. So, should be good. Some sausage breakfast sandwiches on croissants. Not a bad way to go. All Thank right. you so yeah. much for yeah. coming. I'm yeah. really glad that you came. Yeah. You yeah. were an awesome conversationalist, so ah. it was great having you as a part of it. And yeah. hopefully we can hook up on some other adventures. So. Yeah, yeah likewise.
You gonna take the easy track back? Yeah, I'm just gonna start working my way north and see, you know, once I get out of here, and, uh, see what, see what the weather's you... doing and uh, which way I wanna go. So, cool. Thanks so much, it. man. Drive safe. Yeah, yeah. Right now we are making our way over towards Cathedral Valley. This part of the desert is some of the most beautiful part of Utah's desert in my opinion. It's absolutely stunning. Uh, we lost one rig last, this morning. Andrew had to head back towards Logan, Utah. So he has a long drive so we said farewell to him. And the rest of us are going to be making our way over to see Temple of the Moon and Temple of the Sun which are in a remote part of Capitol Reef National Park called Cathedral Valley. There's a bunch of massive monoliths. They're two of the most um, prominent, and it's a once in a lifetime type thing to see. They're absolutely incredible. It blows my mind that there's so much beauty um, in that one little pocket. There's just this massive valley and all these huge monoliths, and just years and years and years of erosion to make such a beautiful place, and we're so lucky to be able to have fun dirt tracks that lead us right into it. Look at that, that's just incredible. The red rock, you can see some of the big monoliths. There's Temple of the Sun down there, Temple of the Moon, and then back behind them, that backdrop of those snow-covered mountains. It's about as beautiful of a view as I can imagine. It's impossible to describe just the majesty of these things. They are so huge, just absolutely beautiful. It just straight up incredible. It's something that I hope that anyone who watches this channel sets a goal to go experience for themselves because it is amazing. beautiful and it's even more amazing that it's right here next to Temple of the Sun and right back there against Temple of the Moon it's so beautiful I love Brent's Land Cruiser it has had me looking at classifieds all week remember to check out his channel ain't life great Taking a quick stop looking at Temple of the Moon. You can see Temple of the Sun back there where we just came from. These things are just massive. We just pulled out of the turnoff where Temple of the Moon, Temple of the Sun is in Glass Mountain. Um, now we're just back on the Cathedral Road loop and we're going to start making our way across here towards some other cool monoliths that are in here. Check out some of those and then uh, 
start heading up the switchbacks to kind of take you up on top of the Cathedral Valley area and then you have a bunch of really cool lookouts down below. It's really beautiful. So we're checking out something new in Cathedral Valley that I haven't seen. It's the gypsum sinkhole. Um, it's just a little bit of a, about a mile off of the regular trail and I'm pretty excited to see what this looks like. Well this gypsum sinkhole is no joke. It is super deep. It cuts back under on both sides, way further than I was expecting. When we saw the sign for it, I thought, oh, we'll see what this looks like. It's way cooler than I thought, and I'm okay that there's not a rail here, but for a national park, I cannot believe there's not a rail on this thing. Check it out. There's the lead. Mike's been awesome. He's been running the show, basically leading the pack since I've been trying to get back and forth and get a bunch of video footage and stuff. This is what we want Mike to turn his forerunner into is this one. Lane's forerunner is rad. A little bit of snow and more switchbacks. You'd think I would learn. Well, luckily there's not very much snow right here. But look at that view right there. Down checking out Cathedral Valley. It's amazing. That's a warmer? Yeah, it's hard. It's a 12 volt portable stove plugs in. No the 12 way. volt socket and it gets to about 300 And this degrees. is a Jackery that you're using it off no, of? No, this or? one's a, a Max Oak. A Max Oak? Yeah. Cool. And what kind of fridge are you running? That's a Domatic 35CFX with just an yeah, insulation cover Look at that. So yeah, that's about the only thing that's organized. Everything else we just kind of chaos, so. That's sweet. <laughs> and we're like coming on the way over and they're making burritos while we're like, when should we turn our burritos on? And I'm thinking, <laughs> I'm in the wrong vehicle as I'm like thinking about the peanut butter and jelly sandwich I was making over there. We stopped for lunch at the Cathedral Valley Campground. This gave us space to park and everyone the chance to hit the pit toilets. Outside of the national park, there is a lot of great camping on BLM land, which is what I normally opt for. But if you want a nice, primitive campsite, this is a great choice. It is a first come, first serve campsite. We stopped several times to check out some of the amazing overlooks into the valley. You can see on the bottom of the screen, there used to be a road down from this one. I do not think it was ever open to public, but it should be. As beautiful as this view is, being able to drive down and around this monolith would be an incredible experience that everyone deserves to have.
The bentonite hills appear as soft contoured banded hills in varying hues of brown, red, purple, gray, and green. The hills are comprised of a bushy basin shell member of the Morrison Formation. Bentonite clay, altered volcanic ash, absorbs water and becomes very slick and gummy when wet, making vehicle or foot travel difficult or impossible. During my trip here last year, a vehicle was stuck on the hill blocking the road. The tow truck that came to rescue it got stuck in the process of getting that one out, so just make sure to keep an eye on the weather and be safe. That's crazy. That is a huge flywheel. It's even got the engine in there still. It's pretty yeah, cool. Dad, I know what been hitting this shot It's really cool. It's one of those desert relics. Gets stuck here and stays here forever. So right now I'm pulling up on James and he is just more proof that you can do amazing adventures in any rig. He's got this great looking uh, Dodge Durango. It's completely stock and he's taken on everything that we've had to do today. There have been a couple of areas where he's had to be real careful about his line and we've scratched up his front bumper just a tiny bit but he's been able to come on this entire trip. It's absolutely fantastic. And he bought that thing he said a couple years ago from a friend for 2,500 bucks. This does not have to be expensive. Go out in what you have and uh, get out and enjoy the, all of the trails that you can. And when you can't hit any more trails with what you have, that's when you can upgrade and get something else. stop just on the other side of the river Aaron back up oh he's got on board air and everything yeah. of course you've got the on board air I should have got I'm double. surprised that you don't I do oh you do it wouldn't work oh dang I should have got double
Until the you. next adventure, guys. Yep, have a good one. Have a good one. Take care. See you later, guys. See you. Drive safe. We just came across the Fremont River. Uh, the crossing was super smooth. We were able to get everyone through, no problems. We had a little bit of concerns about the Durango just because it has a little bit seller, smaller set of tires, but no problem getting it through. Hopefully we got some excellent footage. If you love this trip, please hit that like button. Also, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. If you want to follow us on the day-to-day, -day, you can check us out on Instagram at Backroad Exploration. Thanks for watching.